Greetings to all. Welcome to Salesforce CPQ video series. In today's session, we would be looking at custom actions in search filters. I am Sudha Sundaram. I have 12 plus years of experience predominantly in the Salesforce and Agile world. Uh, I'm also 11x Salesforce.com certified, which includes application architect and Salesforce CPQ specialist. I am a trailblazer mentor. Outside Salesforce, I love to paint, dance, and I love traveling. Here are the links to my Twitter and LinkedIn handle. You could follow me if you would like to. In today's session, we will be looking at custom actions and search filters in more detail. Custom actions are typically like buttons that sales reps can click to perform an action in the code line editor, configurator, or several other detail pages. Custom actions have different actions available based on where the custom action appears in Salesforce CPQ. For example, custom actions in the code line editor can delete lines, add a code line group, or save the code and navigate to an internal or an external page, while custom actions in the configurator can load an internal or external page and apply edit rules. If the custom actions are on the contract, it can either amend or renew the contract. You could also create conditions for your custom actions. If your action contains conditions, then Salesforce CPQ does not show the action until your code meets them. You can also add search filters to your custom action. When a sales rep clicks the custom action in the code line editor or the configurator, it filters the products based on the search filter parameters. Salesforce CPQ ships with several custom actions you can enable in the code line editor. Please note that Salesforce CPQ supports a maximum of five custom actions in the code line editor. Now let us see what search filters are. We could use the code line editor search filter to filter products, assets, or subscriptions by their field values. So when we navigate to the code and when we click on the edit lines and we try to add products, you would see the small search filter icon in your screen. And that is how you use your search filters. And once you click on that, you would see this particular uh, section that comes on the right side of your screen where you could use any of these uh, product filters to filter your search results. You could add more fields to this particular search filter or remove fields from here. Now let us see about custom actions in detail with the use case. Say for example, our sales reps want the ability to quickly search for support products instead of looking through a large product catalog. We could either ask the sales reps to use the search filter that you see here and filter for support under product family and click on apply to see the search results or we could make it easy by creating a custom action, a button for a sales rep you know, where he clicks to quickly get a filter results for the support products. Now let us see how to create this custom action and the search filter associated with it for this. So the first step is to go to the custom actions object. And once we are on the custom actions, let us create a new custom action. So let us give a name, say for example, here we are trying to add support products. So let the, let be called add support. The display order lets the system display this particular custom action in the specific order. So if you want this button to appear in the first, then please keep the number one here for the display order. Type determines what kind of custom action is this? Is this a button, a menu, or a separator? In our case, we would like to create a button. So let's go ahead and select a button. Pattern custom action groups one or more custom actions under a drop down arrow. There is no limit to the number of custom actions that look up to the same pattern, but Salesforce do recommend that our child custom actions don't flow over the code lines. To give you an example of a parent custom actions, 
if you have noticed on the edit lines we do see add favorites which is nested under add products so the parent custom action for add favorites is add products moving on active lets you keep your custom action active and the brand button styling is based on the brand button settings in your org's active theme. So if you would like to make this custom action as a brand button, we could select that. So the next two fields here that you see are URL target and the URL. So if your custom action links to a URL, you specify whether clicking the custom action replaces the current page or opens a new page in your sales reps browser. And in the URL field, this is a link to an internal or external page or a Salesforce CPQ field. Moving further down to the layout section, the page is where we choose where the custom action appears. This field controls the available values in the location and the action field. So in our case, we would want this add a support button to be on the code line editor. So we pick that as a page. And location, we would choose code or group. It's the place where the custom action appears in your chosen page, which is the code line editor. And action determines the result of selecting the custom action. So in our case, we want to add products. If you would like, you could choose an icon. Uh, if you want your button to look like a three dots or in a specific way, you could choose an icon. And for the label, I'm going to choose add support. So if you do not see the value that you want here, please ensure that you go back to the object manager and uh, under the custom actions object, go to the label pick list field and add the pick list value there. I'm going ahead and clicking on save. Once you save the custom action, you can go to the related tabs and add a search filter to filter just the su support products from the product catalog. Let's go ahead and give a filter name. and the target object would be product the target field would be product family operator equals filter value would be support let's give a display order and Select to hide this filter from the UI um, if you want the search filter hidden. So hidden filters still contribute to search queries. You set this field with an established filter value if you don't want users to know that search results are limited. So let's go ahead and save this. Now, when we go back to the code, and click on edit lines. We can see that add support custom action is added here. And this is in the brand style. When we click on this, the sales reps would only see the products that belong to the product family support. However, the sales rep can go ahead and change the product family to a different one if they would like and could see the changes here. So one important thing to note on search filters is if you add a checkbox field to your search filter, Salesforce CPQ filters products based on the checkbox value returning false. Say for example, you have products with a LCD screen and LCD screen is a checkbox in your products. And uh, if I put this in the search filter, by default, it's going to take the checkbox as false while executing the search filter. Now, let us say, for example, your organization sells different types of 
products, having software, hardware, services, or support product families. And your sales team wants to have only products having a specific product family on your particular code. So creating a dynamic search filter makes a limited set of products available to your sales reps. So for this particular use case, we would be ensuring that we have a dynamic search filter. So CPQ admins can set custom search filters to apply dynamically using a filter source object and filter source fields from the search filter. So let us go ahead and see how do we create dynamic search filter. So I'm on search filters object. And for demo purposes, I already created a dynamic search filter to fulfill our use case where we are trying to filter by product family based on what is in the code and show the products only with those product families. So let's take a detailed look at this view. So the filter name is where we give a name to our filter. And the target object in our case is products because we are trying to retrieve all products that match the product family of the code. The target field is product family and that should equal to our filter source object, which is code in this case. And the field that we would be looking at in code is the product family. So this search filter will try to match the product family of all the products which are same as the product family listed on the code and try to just show those products when the sales rep tries to click on add products on his code lines. So let us see this in action right now. Let us take a particular code and if you note, I've created a product family field here on the code object with the same set of values as the product family of the products. So here I have selected support as the product family on my code. So when I now click on the edit lines and click on add products, because this dynamic search filter is active, it only shows me the products that belong to the product family support. It does not so show me any other product family here. So let's go back to our code and try to change this particular product family on my code to a different value and see if it works. Let's say I'm picking hardware because this code is specific for hardware products. When I go on to edit lines and click on add products, it should now show me all products that belong to the product family hardware. So this is a cool feature when you want to dynamically update your search filters and show your results accordingly based on a code object product family. With that, we come to end of today's session. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Apex Hours, for giving us the opportunity to present this session here.